Hello again everyone, I'm Larry Hamilton. Welcome to my YouTube painting channel. Thank you for watching. Today we're going to do a special uh, watercolor painting uh, that I just sort of created in my own mind. I looked at some uh, photographs and created a little sketch here and I uh, want to show you what I have. Um, I have a, uh, on my uh, sketchbook here, I have a, a little scene. It's going to be a winter scene uh, with some birch trees in the foreground, a little stream running from the foreground to the background, uh, some background trees and some sky that has sort of a sunset ap uh, appearance. And uh, so I use my uh, little tool I'd like to tell you about that I just learned about not long ago. Uh, this uh, Pilot Corporation has uh, uh, a new pen called Frixion, F-R-I-X ION uh, by Pilot. Um, and what's unique about it is it's a it's a black sketching pen, uh, but it also has an erasable, uh, it's erasable. Uh, so if you have a, a problem with the scene, like here I had the sort of the, I'm, I'm going to have a sun back here, a sun setting back here in the back, and I was going to have some reflections, and I started putting the reflections in the wrong way. So you can just come in here and use the back of this pen and erase your pen marks, uh, which is really unusual. Uh, so I want the reflections to go for off of these p uh, birch trees and go this way. Uh, so I want these reflections to go this way. So if I have any problem, I uh, just come in here and just use the eraser and just sort of erase it out. It's really uh, a neat, neat tool. Uh, it kind of takes the intimidation away from using uh, uh, a pen. And uh, so I recommend you get a couple of these and try them. They come in a couple different uh, uh, sizes, like an 07 and 05 millimeter tip. Um, and uh, they're erasable, um, and so I really like them. I just started using them a, a month or so ago, and I really uh, like to use them. So anyway, there's my sketch, or there's my, uh, uh, yeah, that's my first sketch. Um, I've taken that and put that on the, uh, on my paper. I have a 15 by 11, or 11 by 14, sorry, 11 by 14 paper here by Fabriano Artistico, and it's a uh, cold press 30, 300 pound paper. And uh, so that's what we're going to painting on. I have a little bit of a sketch here that I've put on it already based on my original sketch that I was just showing you. And uh, so I'm going to uh, try to do this kind of fast and loose, hopefully. Uh, if I can get it loose enough, I'll, uh, I'll be happy. Um, if not, I'll, uh, you may not even see this video, I don't know. Uh, depends on how I like it. Um, anyway, I've got my, uh, go through my brushes and palette here, which is normal for my water can, uh, watercolor classes. Um, this is my Sterling Edwards palette, my Sterling Edwards brushes. I have a couple of these uh, uh, bristle brushes here that I use for blending and, and, and uh, merging and, and wetting the paper. I have uh, a couple of uh, flats here that I use for uh, uh, painting with. Uh, they're nylon bristle, or nylon, uh, uh, yeah, bristles. And uh, then I have a few rounds. I have a 12, an 8, a 4, and I have a script liner here. And uh, that's pretty much the set of brushes. Um, I have a link to buy these brushes if you want them. They're on my uh, Amazon uh, shopping page. There'll be links below this video for that if you want to uh, check those out. And uh, then I want to go around the paints again. I have my Mary Blue watercolors here. and. Uh, they're uh, very wonderful transparent watercolors and I have here I have neutral tint cyan blue primary blue cyan it's called ultramarine blue I have permanent blue violet bluish here um, crimson lake primary red magenta cadmium red burnt sienna raw sienna yellow ochre I have here cupric green sap green Limon yellow, primary yellow, and my browns I have a burnt umber and a still to grain brown, and I have an orange here called Auvignon orange. I also have a little bit of uh, lamp black here, and I have a little bit of titanium white that I may or may not use. Uh, I may not use all these colors, may not use all these brushes, but uh, I have them available. So I want to start out here and show you I have this uh, sketch on my uh, paper here, and it's a little bit heavy. I've got a little bit heavy on the uh, graphite just because I wanted you to see it. So I'm going to take a little bit of that graphite off now so it doesn't show up, particularly at the edge of these uh, uh, birch trees that I have here. So I want to uh, thin that down a little bit or take a little bit of it off. 
So by the time I get done, you probably won't even be able to see my sketch marks on this paper. Um, so let's just do that, get that done. Um, this is going to be a little uh, river in here that's coming out this way, and it's a snow scene, so the river will be darker than the snow, uh, which is not unusual. Uh, many times in photographs you see a river and it looks like it's actually black when you have snow around it. It's so dark because water reflects what's in it, what's around it, it just because it can't reflect the snow because uh, it's uh, above it uh, generally. So anyway, I think I'm ready to go with this and uh, let's see if we can get started. I'm going to uh, do a little bit of wetting in this paper here with my clear water uh, and I want to put in a uh, leave room around these trees so I don't paint over the trees because I want to have them to be white as much as possible. They'll probably have a little blue and a little gray in them maybe, but uh, I'm just going to wet around them and uh, we'll come in and put this sky in back here. Uh, this might be a candidate for a painting that would put the sky in last. I don't know. I'll try it and see how it works. If I like it, <clears throat> you will see it. If I don't like it, you'll never see this painting. Since I'm not doing this live, I have a little flexibility in what I show you. When I have my live classes, I can't, uh, can't change my mind or filter out something. Okay, so we got that. Um, and it's that graphite smearing a little bit, but that's all right. Okay, so we're going to start with a sort of a yellow, bright yellow, cad yellow here. Uh, for this sun, and I'm going to use a little bit of my Ovignon orange uh, with it uh, to see if I can uh, get a uh, have a nice reddish orange uh, sunset back there. And it's running everywhere, of course. Let me get my uh, there we go. Um, okay. Did run down in here, a little bit into the snow, but uh, that's because I put uh, clear water down there. Okay, let's keep going with that a little bit. I want this to have a very bright, very yellow. And you, you know I'm painting vertically here, which makes a difference as well. Uh, I can't control the vertical running of the paint very well, um, but nevertheless, I'm going to show you as much as I can here with this bright orange setup. And I'm going to put a little bit of that behind these other little trees back in here that are going to be behind the. Uh, I'm going to put some darker trees over that, so I want this to sort of show through, but I don't want it to show through the uh, these uh, birch trees because I want them to go over the top, so I have to leave that open. I could use uh, some sort of a uh, masking fluid here, masking uh, material of some kind to uh, um, sort of keep them from getting painted over, but um, I didn't want to do that right now. Um, I'm going to have another lesson where I use some of that masking uh, material, and um, we'll just use a lot of it and paint. I'll have enough, enough uh, to paint with it that I'll be able to show you and demonstrate uh, that very well. Put this in here. Okay, so you should be able to at least see the, the gaps where I've left for these uh, trees to go. Uh, I'm going to come back and just put a little more red in here, get this just a little darker, a little brighter um, in there. And uh, now what I want on top of that is a sort of a purplish gray. It's going to merge with it and make a little bit of a darker sky, more of a winter sky, even though this is a, a sunset. So I'm getting some uh, neutral tint and uh, some of my uh, violet over there. And I'm going to just sort of see if I can 
mix it together here. I got a, a few hairs on my brush coming out. Okay, something like this. And over here on this side. Okay. And let's take that and sort of feather it out a little bit, lighten it up just a little. Over here, we've got a similar situation. I want to leave room for my trees that go through, and these are nice complementary colors, so they'll they look uh, they look pretty nice usually when you put these two colors together. Okay, so I've got some room for my uh, birch tree sticking through there. It's starting to dry out a little bit, which is good. Um, come back and put a little bit of uh, a little bit more of this dark neutral tint in here in some areas. Kind of in this side of the brush, so I'm just going to pull it down here and sort of put it in that way and pull it together, merge it together. Use this brush, this uh, bristle brush. You can dry it out and you can kind of merge these things together with a little scrubbing action here that sort of helps them kind of go together. I've used that technique before. That's good enough for that. Right now I'm going to come back as that dries. I'm going to put some more trees in there, but right now I'm going to leave it at that. Um, down here in this area we've got some, uh, basically it's snow. There's not a lot of uh, color to it. Uh, I'm going to pick up a little bit of my blue, my ultra blue here, and uh, see if I can just put in a few things that look like there's some Maybe some snow and some shadows back in there. A little bit in between these two trees. Here, in between these trees. Let's see, this tree is, yeah. Okay, very light, um, just light blue covering. That's just almost pure uh, ultramarine blue, but it's, uh, I've got it thinned down quite a bit with a lot of water, so it's not really dark. This is going to be darker back here, maybe, outlining my water. Okay. Pull it down. Get a lot of water. Lighten it up. in here, a little bit of snow in there. <clears throat> so this is all pretty much out of my head, folks. There's no, uh, nothing to look at here. other than my sketch. So 
So as it's a sunset type of sunset uh, scene, it's basically there is some darkness on this uh, snow and uh, by putting some more shadows in there I'll be able to uh, let you see that darkness better uh, as we go along here. I just want to get a lot of this filled in with some basic color here. Okay, there's a little more. Very light. I don't have to have this very dark. What we do need, we're going to need some uh, reflections on this uh, snow of this yellow and orange color we have. We have a few white streaks in there now. We're starting to come forward, picking up a few things like that that's helping. I don't want that to look like snow out there. I don't want it to look like uh, blue grass. area here that there's trees come out of that I want to uh, leave. Okay. Interesting. How about over here? What have we got going on there? Going pretty fast. I think that's the water I just painted in there. It's all right. That water is going to be a lot darker, so I'm not worried about having some some color in that water. We'll paint right over it. Okay. So just finish these off. Keep some soft edges around, so I don't have a lot of streaks in there. Snow tends to be either rough texture or um, a uh, soft texture generally. There's rough texture right there. Uh, I'm just taking the brush and moving it very quickly across the paper. So I'm just making some interesting marks back here that sort of give us a little bit of a idea that there's some different um, drifts of snow, I guess you want to call it. Make it kind of continue over here, soften up one edge. Top edge should be hard and that bottom edge should be soft as these come toward you. So we're just, it's, it's uh, some artists call this modeling the snow or modeling the, the uh, the shadows in the snow. There's a little berm of some kind. There might be another little berm back here. It's got some snow build up in it. Okay, we get into that sort of ugly stage here where you're not sure what stuff is. Lighten this up. I may darken those corners down a little bit in a minute, but right now I'm going to leave it like that and uh, see how we do here. Okay, um, so far I've left those trees alone. Um, it's kind of dry back there now, so I'm going to come back and uh, get me some uh, browns, get me a little bit of my uh, burnt umber here, and uh, make up a nice little bit of it with burnt umber and a little bit of my still to grain brown, and come back in here and start putting in some 
trees back in here that's going to thinking I want to get my flat brush for this. I can make these trees much nicer with a flat brush, I think, than I can with a round brush, even though I should be able to do it with either kind of brush. But I'm going to uh, make some of these uh, pine trees back here that are sort of letting the sun shine through. Here we go. Yeah, something like this. Make sure I carry that color over on the other side of this tree so we don't have, so you really know that it's going behind this tree. It's not uh, confusing the viewer. Might be some other trees back here that are painted negatively. Something like that. Put in some nice and over here we'll do the same kind of thing. Maybe change the color slightly. Make it a little darker maybe over here on this side. As it is further away from the uh, sun, the sunset. So let's just plop in some things. Okay, that's sort of the, the base of it. I want that to be a little darker at the bottom on some of these. So I'm just going to pull in some, some of my uh, neutral tint here at the bottom and pick up a few more dark things in here like this. So I'm putting another layer over what I have. And um, you'll be able to see that that's a, uh, I'm adding depth. Every time I put another layer on here, I'm adding depth to this painting. And uh, I want to leave this area kind of open so we can see through it a little bit. We're getting some reflectivity coming through. These are interesting trees back there. Maybe they're further away a little bit. Like that. And we'll put some more up this way. Cool, I like the way that's starting to look already. You got that nice orange background in there. Make sure I outline the side of this tree very well. And put in some darker bottoms here. Make these darker, like that. Okay, so I have some nice rolling hill back here that looks like we've got some snow built up. Just touching it here and there. I want to make this straight. as I can. So you're seeing the, the nice background here. I get a little darker as I move to the right. Um, a little less descript over here, but I'm going to make it uh, a little higher in some areas. Leave some ground showing through. And that's even put a little bit of a 
you know, like a area that actually has snow growing behind it or snow behind it. Something like this. Um, I'm going to extend that on the other side of this tree here so it definitely shows you there's something going on there. All right. What did I just do there, folks? I added depth because I put this layer in there and it makes it look like now there's more hiding back in here, more snow. Start this. Just slight little pull-ups here. You can join some together and add a few more trees in there. Connect it so we have a, a way to get from one dark area to another. These are drying out over here, so I'm going to come back and put a few more uh, dark things in here. This area over here could be darker, I think. I'm going to put a little bit of a another um, area that's got some, I don't know, some weeds or bushes or something sticking up. Get a little bit of drier paint here and put some more trees in back here. Maybe you got some more trees that have uh, lighter trunks on them. We'll sort of paint around them. Okay. Something like that. Add some very nice depth and Things that look nice back there. Okay, something like that. And over here we got a little bit of a berm of some sort that's got some weeds growing out of it. So I'm really just not doing a lot of uh, specific painting. I'm just using an impressionistic stroke and sort of keeping this uh, very loose could be looser, I suppose. That to be a little straighter there. These could be a little straighter, maybe. All right, stop with that. Step back, look at it. Okay, my, uh, this uh, sun is gonna reflect in the water here, it's going to reflect in the water here. It's going to hit a little bit on the uh, on these trees. Um, at least that's what I want to have it do. Um, what color have I got here? This is a. All right, I'm going to start putting in my side of my water here. This is a uh, very dark actually we could treat this water as if it's uh, frozen over and have have it showing sort of a snow snowy look along here this is Outlining that water on the bank comes down like that. Um, change my color a little bit. Over here, we're going to have a darker bank on this side. Okay. I'll leave some room in there for the sun to shine through. Blacker, darker. All right, I haven't really painted this uh, river or creek here yet, but you can see it for sure, right? You can tell it's there. Okay, let's see here. What are you going to do next? Let's take a little bit of this color we got in the sky and see if we can put a little bit. I think I want to wet that a little bit. This in here. 
just clear water. I want to get a uh, nice reflection going in here. And uh, put some clear water in there and just pick up a little bit of this sky color, pull it down. And if I put vertical strokes in it like this, you will naturally believe that's reflection of some kind of water or something. Just because of the way the brush strokes go. I'm going to get me a pull out my round brush here, get a little more of this uh, yellow and uh, Ovignon orange and see if I can put a little bit of a reflection in here to kind of indicate that. Okay. It's wet so it's all blending together. Put a little more over here maybe. Wherever it's kind of coming through the, the trees or the uh, background there. Okay, um, also I want it back here on this uh, snow back in here, so I'm just going to lightly wet that. I don't want to wet it enough to uh, pick up any of that paint, but I want it to uh, just be soft. It's hard to see that probably on the camera, but uh, A little more there. Clear water, blend it out, soften it out so that it doesn't have hard edges in it. Okay. Come back now to my darker colors I'm using for this bank and see if I can pull some of that together now. Pull a few more of those down. got a similar situ situation going on. A little bit more reflectivity there, darken it down just a bit. This darker back here in the back. Hopefully, I can get that a little better back here. Okay, getting some good color changes in there. Even get a little bank reflection going on here, maybe. Yeah. And just sort of smooth that out. All right. Um, on this top side of the water here, along the, the bank, we're going to try to see if we can make it look like we've got some uh, snow that's sort of built up a little bit, if you will. A little bit of a shadow in there and pull it back. Hopefully that's giving the optical illusion effect that I want. Just a little bit in here maybe. Oh, it's probably too wet. I can't do it over there. Um, but over here on this front side 
I can. I can start pulling up some Pull it up, wet it down, blend it out. So I'm giving it a, a bit of a, a hard edge shadow for us. Not a shadow, but just a hard edge um, here. And uh, I want to continue that color, if I can, the reflection of this um, background, the sun, and so forth going to come this way and maybe we can make it look like the uh, there's a bank here coming down by making this a bit of an angle here same kind of thing over here we might be able to do so we're getting it kind of the way I, th I envisioned it in my mind okay take a next Stopping, I have my monitor turned on behind me here so I can uh, actually see what I hope you're seeing on the uh, from the camera. Uh, let's see, put a little more dark in here. Yeah. Okay. So it sort of gives this uh, spread out of, of um, reflection, reflectivity coming over this way and uh, I want to give that to the snow if I can over this way, adding a little bit here and there. So that's better smooth it out. All right. So I got a little bit of that reflectivity going on. What else? Um, I think I'm going to put just a little bit more blue in here. See how that's doing. I'll make it come down and look like it's got some nice bank to it here. Just a little bit of this orange yellowish color. Soften it off, make sure it's not too hard edged. And come back and pick up a little of this blue and put a few more things back here behind it there so I can I'm showing you now a, uh, a bit of a change in the, the landscape even a little bit right here might not hurt letting it run and blend together so I've got these trees really about all I have left here are these uh, trees um, I think I want to put something over here however Going to be soft so I'm just going to put a little water down and uh, I don't know what what I should put there but I'm going to try a little bit of my colors I have here in my palette and we'll just throw in something down here that uh, looks like there might be something in the corner that's kind of casting a shadow or something in this corner it's really just a trick to um, close this area in down here um, and just bring it over this way yeah that'll work I think stop step back take a look I've been going about 36 minutes we're close to getting done here all I gotta do is document these trees for you and uh, Make that a little softer right there. It's looking a little too hard to me. In some areas, okay. Um, in front of this tree here, we've got some areas that I want to uh, show some shadow. I want to show these trees coming out of 
the ground here uh, more snow and more uh, okay something like this let's just leave it like that all right so the trees how are we going to document these trees these are uh, birch trees and they have typically they have uh, circles not circles but uh, well they, they do have sort of uh, things that look like they're um, curved around them like this and they have these old dark patches that uh, sit in there that are where branches have uh, broken off they're usually sort of triangular they sort of look something like this so I'm just sort of hitting it here and there as I'm going up, I'm trying to make these more um, curved as if I were looking at them from the bottom. They might look like they're curved down instead of up. When you're looking at them here, they may, they may actually look curved up like that. I exaggerated that, but that's the idea. Um, so here we've got several of them. They're, they're coming over this way. Got this one tree that's sort of, uh, I don't know, angled in here that, uh, make sure I don't get my hand in all this stuff down here. And this one is going to have similar types of things going on. Spent a lot of time painting these little uh, birch tree patterns. I think I'm doing enough to maybe tell you these are birch trees, I hope. Um, uh, they do get darker at the bottom. I want to save some room for that. Let's go up here and put in some... As they get higher up, they might get a little lighter, I don't know. Something like this. We might have a, I don't know, something sticking out where a branch was on there before something like this I'm doing this fairly quickly folks you can take your time and do it much more carefully than I am I don't want to bore you totally I know some of my paintings are fairly long and they probably do get boring but I'm trying to speed them up I actually put a uh, one of these uh, fast fast moving videos time it's called time lapse videos I may do that with this one I don't know yet I'm uh, still trying to decide uh, this has a some dark coming up from the bottom here where it goes into the ground this one over here is going to be the same way they all have this I'm going to put it on the side that's away from the sun so you can actually see there's a clump of three there. This one's got its dark side here. I'm using a small fine brush here for this. Number four, I believe it is, yeah. So I'm just putting in some dark uh, brown spots here in this uh, to sort of help define the side of this tree that's away from the sun, these trees not putting it all the way down I don't want to beat you over the head with it but I want you to see that that's uh, like that a little darker at the bottom all the way around usually and they really get uh, like that and just to be consistent with my color here. I want to come back and pick up a little of this orange and yellow. Uh, come on, get some water in there. All right, and just put just a very light highlight along here on this edge. Give it a, probably can't even see that, can you? 
I'll throw some water in there and sort of blend it out too much. Over here, we'll put a little bit of a something going on there. Just enough to let you see there's a little bit of a highlight on it. All right, this other side over here, we got the same thing going on. I'm going to spend time doing this. I may knock this out, cut it out of the video so it's, I just zip through it without spending all the time that it's going to take me to do this. So birch trees have these little triangular things all over them and they uh, that's what is the telltale sign of a birch tree. You have very fine circular patches where there's bark missing and it goes pretty fast. Maybe I'm not gonna bore you too much. Put another little spot or two in here like this. Just sort of come down and uh, don't have to uh, paint every place where there was a branch. You don't have to paint every triangle that was in the tree. Just come down and see how fast we can do that. A little bit of this uh, orange over here on this side, lighten it up just a little. It's not very light, is it? <clears throat> some clear water and sort of blend it, let it blur together here in some spots. Yeah. These are not getting a lot of Getting a lot of sun. They're actually darker. So I should probably pull this up down here like I did the other one. Pick up some darks, pick up some browns. Just kind of pull the brush up very quickly. These are probably almost all in silhouette over here. Same with this one here. So put a little highlight of the yellow on this side. A bit of it here, orange I should say, not yellow. Get my dark, my blacks, my... Like this. All right, so that's that. Um, I've left room for some dark darker shadows here with the uh, over the snow hopefully this is going to uh, I don't know if I want to put some water on there or not I'm trying to decide let's put some clear water in here like right down here like this and a little bit of clear water like this and a little bit of clear water like this and like this. Okay, so what I've done is I've painted the area where I want the shadows of these trees to fall. And I'm going to let it sort of run here as much as I can in that, in that area that I wet. I'm going to mess that one up a little bit. Um, let's throw some more water on there and soften it up a little bit. I want that shadow to sort of connect almost to those trees so that we have so that you know that shadow belongs to that tree. Here, got a little 
little tool here I like to try out. I'm going to put a little spray, spray a little water on this just to loosen things up a little bit. Um, spray bottle, nice little uh, tool to have in your arsenal. Um, don't use it very much. Haven't hardly used it at all, actually, um, in this painting or other paintings. So you may see me pull that out every once in a while. I'm going to go back up here where it's a little dry and put in a few more uh, little twigs and things up here that uh, could be sitting around. Maybe a few. I did some up there already. I'll put a few in here, maybe. Not much, just enough. Get some dark colors here that sort of darker, darker. All right, something like this. A little darker color in the bottom of it. If I can get some darker color. And come back with my script liner here and uh, put in just a few more twigs and stuff up here. There's maybe some things going on like this that have some things going on with them, browns and like that in here. Bring it down here, we probably got a little taller down here. We'll put in some that are much taller. Like that. Um, maybe even some and some tree trunks, little trees or something floating around down here. Let's put in something that looks like it might be a tree or a sprig of some kind. I don't know. Like that. Over here we might have a few things that sort of go out and have little spots on them. Around this, this tree here we might have a few that uh, are wishing they could be a birch tree, but they're not. Okay, something like this over here as well. Just uh, little calligraphy types of things to kind of put finishing touches on this to uh, finish it off. That was dark. So maybe some things coming from down below here even, who knows. At the edge of this water there. All right, uh, maybe this is a good time to hit that with a, a more water, let it run. See how that works. Up here, got a few things sprawling out. All right. I think that's probably enough. Just <clears throat> what with my big brush here. I see an area that can have just a little more dark underneath it over here. It's not very dark, is it? <clears throat> okay, I gotta stop here. I need somebody to yell stop. Just a few little blurbs over there that Kind of tie this scene together, I guess, hopefully. And with that, I get my fancy brush out here and see if I can find a suitable color and pop a signature on this thing. That's running a little bit right there. I'll just blot in with my paper towel. Yeah. Across here, I'm going to put in a quick signature. Got a little water standing there, just waiting to run down on me. Come on here, folks, get some water, get some 
paint. Okay, you can maybe see that, hopefully. All right, folks, I uh, hope you enjoyed this little painting. I hope you give it a try and uh, try out your uh, ability on some birch trees. This is my first time I've painted birch trees in watercolor, so uh, that was my challenge for today. And uh, along with uh, trying to give a nice little sunset back there that has some color in it and uh, make a winter sky and a little stream. Hope you like it, and uh, thanks for watching again. Check out my website, check out my Facebook page, uh, check out my little shopping links down below this that uh, you can buy some of these materials, you can buy some of the paint, you can buy the brushes uh, that I use from Sterling Edwards. Um, and I make a little money off of that, but uh, not much. Um, so uh, anyway, if you uh, like this, let me know how you do. Give it a try, and, uh, and I'll be back in a couple weeks, uh, three weeks maybe, with a watercolor live session. I'll have an oil painting live session on the third Wednesday of the month. And uh, so I hope to see you then. If not, uh, I'll see you next time. Thanks for watching. Bye-bye.